The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 480 Kind of Machine The lady spiraled directionlessly in her glide in no hurry to reach the ground far below. Her soundstone was empty and her mind was full, and she didn't even know how to begin processing what she had been told. How much of what Dorable said had been inference? How much proven? How much mere guesswork? Even if he knew, she didn't, and there had been so much irrelevant science and technical things that were less important to track than the ending results, she squeezed her eyes shut for as long as she dared. Moonglass was deliberately created, and for some negative purpose. No word on what that meant about her, a maybe soul brought from space and the meteor that delivered the glass to the world. Really, it was just a confirmation on things she had worried about earlier, right? She'd seen the unquestionably negative effects of moon glass before with her own eyes, time and time again. Sure, she'd hoped there could be some harmless or benevolent explanation for why she came from a rock with a reputation for possessing unwitting ponies, but she'd always been confident enough there wasn't not to go looking for one. Now she knew for sure, or as surely as she trusted Dorable's ability to do research. There was also the vague and definitely hypothetical threat that someone could do something bad by obtaining nightmare modules, lots of them, but there were always bad guys doing bad things. So what did this even change? Amber couldn't talk to her, but made it clear that she wanted to, and still trusted her. The vast majority of the Empire hated her either way, what she had heard were just words. They didn't have to make a difference. Didn't have to... Didn't have to do anything. Uh, she drifted closer to the ground, convincing herself as logically as possible, yet unable to remove the slight extra weight that had settled in her heart. There was Puddles laying by herself in the grass far below. Maybe she'd distract herself with the windigo. Yo! Filet stuck out her legs for landing, hitting the ground next to Puddle. Whatever you've been up to, listen, I... Uh, she frowned. What are you doing? Puddles was on her side, with her legs splayed and her cheek in the grass, an expression of great discomfort on her face. Leave me alone, she moaned, kicking a hoof weakly for Filet to go away. Uh, hold on, what? Valet squinted at her and leaned closer. You feeling your usual wintry self there? Not gonna demand I give you hugs or anything? Who are you and what have you done with the icy jerk who dragged me all the way out here? Oh, Puddles burped. You were right about there being better things in life than hugs, excuse Valet. I just discovered food. Uh-huh. Valet dug around in one ear with a hoof. Puddles set up slowly in discomfort. Unfortunately, it's something these feeble bony bodies have a limit on. I overate. Ow. She gingerly got to her hoofs. No hugs or belly rubs. I feel like I'll explode. Ugh. How do you handle having things to eat and not being able to indulge in it as much as you want? Really? Valet raised an eyebrow. First off, you stuffed yourself? Try not to make yourself sick. This place would charge extra for that and I'm sure not paying. Second, how are you discovering food? You've been a pony for like five or six years. Puddles gave a cocky smirk that was disrupted by her obvious discomfort. Immortal magic. If I can exist without a physical body, I can make a physical body exist with just me. The lady stared at her for a second longer, then rolled her eyes and turned away. That makes no sense, but whatever. You, like, want to go back to our room so you're not sitting out here instead? Because seriously, I need to lie down for a bit, and it looks like I need to keep an eye on you constantly to stop you from doing stupid stuff and hurting Marina's daughter. Sure, Puddles managed, burping again. It smelled like cake frosting. She put a hoof of a valet's shoulder and leaned on her, and as they made their way back to the cabin, valet even suspected... She really needed it.
Puddles had made herself sick. Valet lay on the bed, a pillow over her ears and a fruitless attempt to drown out the pitiful noises coming from the room's small adjacent bathroom. Bony body, no, Puddles moaned, hunched somewhere out of Valet's sight, but very much within her hearing. It tasted so good, though. Would you close that door, Valet growled, holding the pillow tighter with both forehoofs. It's your own fault. Deal with it, and next time, don't be an idiot. Why does this pony buddy hate me, Puddles feebly retorted. My magic isn't even making it feel better. Valet, help, Puddles. What do you even eat, Valet snapped, still cold and trying to warm up. The toilet flushed. It was called a wedding cake, and I only had one. I didn't pay for it either. Valet rolled over, redoubling her efforts to ignore the Wendigo and still having no success. An age and a half passed, with non-stop complaints and whining met by denial and frustration from Valet, until Puddles finally lost her energy and resigned herself to her fate. Just when Valet was starting to fall asleep, a faucet turned on, and eventually Puddles plodded out of the bathroom, pasty-faced with a dark crystal held in her jaws. Valet sat bolt upright at the side of it. Puddles shakily put it on the bedside table. If Puddles' stomach hates her, maybe I need a better place to keep this. Valet jumped out of bed, no longer questioning anything that had happened. There was a nightmare module right there. It looked like moon glass, only carved to a prism and with a partially see-through internal structure. She needed a closer look. Puddles hauled herself into bed and curled up, doing nothing to stop Valet from approaching it. You know, even if you weren't going to eat that ridiculous of an amount of sugar, it's really not a good idea to keep evil artifacts in, uh, you know, Valet muttered as she approached it, not trying to hide from Puddles what she was doing. Let the Wendigo sleep, please, Puddles said, her voice approaching its cold, metallic special tone, but at an incredibly subdued volume. Her cute pony body has really been put for the ringer, hasn't it, Valet? But you're more than welcome to look at her coughed-up treasure if you want, or even touch it. Valet took a quick step back, staring at Puddles' huddle form. Bananas, you just can't decide on a personality or a way to refer to yourself, can you? It's really creepy. Puddles didn't answer, and Valet's curiosity took hold. The nightmare module was clean. She must have washed it off. At a close inspection, it was transparent, but the dark crystals inside seemed to be filled with thousands or even millions of lines of refraction that would have formed a glorious rainbow had all light that moved through it not been rendered to gray. It sat there, on the table, and in Puddles' weakened state, she could grab it and possibly fly away before the Wendigo could even catch her. But the crystal was made of moon glass, and if she even touched it... Frowning, Valet stretched the hoof out. It was only empty moon glass that drained bad ponies. It would drain her too. She wasn't immune by being from space. Her cutie mark could tell her that much. But as she reached for this one, when her flank tingled, it was an entirely different danger than the sharp needling of pinpoint death. It felt like a distant ocean or storm clouds or a bottomless pit, and it was less dangerous than a sucker punch to the face. This moon glass was different. Uh, better she carry it than puddles. She picked it up. Instantly, there was a presence. Valet recognized it instantly. It was the same way she had felt when an active Dusk statue was near, and more strongly when she refused to join in on Melia and Serena's song. Whatever the module was, whether it was the crystal itself or something inside it, it was pressing on her, and it could speak. Nightmare Module 02 Dishonesty Module A cool, collected mare's voice said in her head. Permission is required to activate using the socket. Warning. Potentially non-reversible physical changes are required by this installation process. Waiting on user permission. Whoa! Valet jumped backward in alarm, nearly dropping the crystal and ready to throw it at a moment's notice. 
No! No way! No permission! Leave me alone! The presence vanished as did the tingle from a cutie mark, leaving the crystal inert in the valet's hooves. Whoa! she repeated, staring at it and shaking. Be quiet, Puddles groaned from the bed back to her normal voice. I want to rest. Yeah, join the club, Valet retorted, still staring at the module before her. She needed to walk, she needed to think, and she needed to keep this thing somewhere where it wouldn't fall into the wrong hooves. What was it Dorable had said about the modules again? They were like instructions for a machine, but one far more advanced than any he had ever seen before. He never specified how he had been able to use them, but he had found a way. She huddled against a wall. Icewitch's legends on the subject were passed down through countless generations by word of mouth, and who knew how embellished, but there were always stories of the mare in the moon, a shapeless figure visible in the pattern of the moon's dark spots when it was full, who had created bad pony kind, yet was also a monster who lived beyond the world, banished to her namesake. Had she always been there, or had she been sent there? Why would someone bad create a full race of ponies? Dorval had said the moon glass seemed of intelligent, malevolent design. Valet shuddered, still holding the inert crystal. She had a decent idea of what kind of machine the nightmare modules were supposed to run on. End of chapter 480